This is going to be the overview for the book of Jude. It's got one chapter, 25 verses, and around 613 words. The author is Jude, which means praise of God. Now, our three applications. Historically, Jude warns the believers of his day about false teachers and encourages them to defend the faith. Doctrinally, he's instructing tribulation saints to contend for the faith against ungodly men, filthy dreamers, brute beasts, and mockers. And devotionally, uh, you can look at this and realize you need to preach against ungodliness and proclaim the second coming in a world that hates the Spirit of God and lives like a bunch of animals, brute beasts. The theme is contend for the faith against the beasts. You're going to see that word show up a lot in here, in Jude, which makes sense because what what's coming in the next book? The beast. Okay, Jude one three, he says, Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. You see, every Bible believer should contend for the faith. With all your might, you need to de defend the right doctrine, defend the words of God, defend the truth itself. Because, verse 4, For there are certain men crept in unawares, who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness, and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. You see, there are many deceivers entered into the world. They deny the deity of Jesus Christ. They, den they deny that there is a true word of God that's been preserved throughout history that you can hold in your lap. They deny that. These are ungodly men, and they turn the grace of God to lasciviousness. You see, some guys out there abuse the grace of God. On one hand, you have the, those who say, well, we're saved by grace through faith, so it doesn't matter how we live. Then on the opposite extreme, you have eternal security deniers that say, well, you believe you're saved by grace, so you, live, you just live however you want to. Both of them turn the grace of God into a wicked thing. You see, we are saved by grace through faith without works, and that has nothing to do with how I live, either way. I'm saved by grace through faith without works, and that's that's because Jesus did all the work for me. I'm saved by grace through faith, so that means there is nothing I can do to lose my salvation. At the same time, I ought to live for God and not take His grace for granted and abuse it. But nothing can take it away from me. And those guys that say, well, if you're saved by grace, just live however you want to. We can live however we want to since we're saved by grace. They're abusing the grace of God. And then the people that say, well, you teach salvation by grace through faith alone, so you just live however you want to. That's their accusation to us. Both of them turn the grace of God into something it shouldn't be. Uh, the people that say, well, you're, you say you're saved by grace, so you just live however you want to, that makes me think, well, if they believed that we're saved by grace through faith plus nothing, then they would live however they wanted to. And the only thing keeping them not living however they want to is they think they can lose their salvation. But uh, both of them don't know what they're talking about on this topic. Jude one six says, And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. You see, you had angels that most likely rebelled with Lucifer at the beginning, you have angels that rebelled in Genesis 6, and there are angels that are under darkness. They call this uh, many times Tartarus, and this could be a completely different chamber down there in hell itself. And you know the Bible talks about hell, talks about the bottomless pit, talks about the lowest hell, talks about these angels are under darkness. Uh, Proverbs 7.27 talks about the chambers of death. And I believe there are different compartments down there in the heart of the earth. Just as a prison has different places that you put different kinds of prisoners, depending on how wicked they are. 
depending on what they've done. You know, you got things like solitary confinement. And you got, you know, like maximum security areas. But these angels are under darkness. Maybe they have their own little compartment down there, separate from everyone else. But, I mean, if they're under darkness, that's pretty low. They're under hell down there. Verse 7, even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh, are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Notice it has the angels that sinned in the same context as Sodom and Gomorrah. Sodom and Gomorrah who gave themselves over to fornication and went after strange flesh. And that's not a coincidence because that's exactly what the sons of God, the angels, did in Genesis 6. They intermarried with human women. It was strange flesh that they went after. And those Sodom and Gomorrah citizens are an example because they are present tense suffering eternal fire. The vengeance of eternal fire. You see, don't worry about getting vengeance. Leave that up to the Lord. He's going to get vengeance on every wicked thing that's ever been done. And Jude 1.8 says, Likewise also these filthy dreamers defile the flesh, despise dominion, and speak evil of dignities. You have men who are filthy dreamers. They have eyes full of adultery, and they can't cease from sin. It's, It's even harder on them in the days we're living in because women today want to give you an eye full. Uh, Wicked men call it eye candy. You ever heard somebody say that? Well... That's somebody, they're giving you an eyeful, giving you eyes full of adultery. It's not good for your eyes. It's bad for your eyes. You know, they they say don't sit too close to the TV. It's bad for your eyes. That's what they used to say. Well, it's also bad for your, your eyes to look at women that you're not married to. And Jesus said, um, if you look on a woman to lust after her, you committed adultery with her already in your heart. And you, And Jude says here, filthy dreamers. If you put bad stuff in your eyes, you're going to have filthy dreams. Job 31.1 says, I made a covenant with mine eyes. Why then should I look upon a maid? Make a covenant with your eyes. Make an agreement that when you see a woman dressed like a harlot, that you'll look elsewhere. Don't have eyes full of adultery. Because you're going to dream about what you see, whether it be daydreams or dreams that you have at night says in Jude 1, nine Yet Michael the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses, durst not bring against him a railing accusation, but said, The Lord rebuke thee. I'm not so sure that this means that uh, Michael is um, weaker than the devil. Because when they fight later, Michael prevails against him. Um, but you see here, Michael knows when the right time is. And now is not the right time for him to make up. Wouldn't have been the right that right there wouldn't have been the right time for him to fight the devil. So at this time he just said, "The Lord rebuke thee." See, Michael is the only archangel mentioned in the Bible. He stands up for Israel. It never actually calls Gabriel an archangel. An archangel, but uh, they uh, Michael and Lucifer were disputing about the body of Moses back there in the Old Testament. Because the Lord has plans to bring Moses' body back. And the tribulation is one of the two witnesses. It says, But these things, but these speak evil of those things which they know not. But what they know naturally as brute beasts, in those things they corrupt themselves. These people are referred to as beasts. So naturally, when a kid sees an athlete he admires today, he says, Man, what a beast. And these uh, people... Do what comes naturally to them. Sin. And the more sin they get into, the more corrupt they become. They speak evil of what they know not. That would be God, the Bible, the saints, and anything to do with what is righteous and holy. That is what they know not. They call evil good and they call good evil. It says in verse 12, These are spots in your feasts of charity when they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear. Clouds there are without water, carried about of winds, trees whose fruit withereth, without fruit twice dead plucked up by the roots. Feeding themselves without fear. The way to feed yourself in the tribulation is to take the mark of the beast. And these men will do it without fear. They're going to feed themselves without fear.
because there is no fear of God before their eyes. It says, clouds they are without water. And Proverbs twenty five fourteen says, Whoso boasteth himself of a false gift is like clouds and wind without rain. They're clouds without water. And it says, Without fruit, twice dead, plucked up by the roots, t- trees whose fruit withereth. Why does their tree and, and their fruit withereth? Well, Psalm 1, 2 through 6 says, talking about uh, a good man, a godly man, it says, His delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. But the ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. You see, these people we're speaking of are the ungodly. You'll see soon. And they they are trees whose fruit withereth, without fruit, twice dead, plucked up by the roots. They aren't planting themselves in the word of God. And delighting in the law of the Lord, they delight in this world. And these people we're speaking of are the ungodly. In Jude one thirteen, it says, Raging waves of the sea, foaming out their own shame, wandering stars, to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. Blackness of darkness forever. They're going to eternal punishment, blacker than a million midnights. It's reserved for them. You see, when you take the mark of the beast, you reserve a permanent place for you in eternal fire. Jude one fourteen and Enoch also. You remember Enoch back there in Genesis chapter 5? Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints. You see, the Lord's coming back with his army on white horses. Revelation 19.14 and Enoch prophesied about this way back in Genesis 5, but it isn't recorded until right here. And he said in verse 15, To execute judgment upon all, and to convince all that are ungodly among them, of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed, and of all their harsh speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. Remember I told you that these people are ungodly. These are murmurers, complainers, walking after their own lusts, and their mouth speaketh great swelling words, having men's persons in admiration because of advantage. So murmuring, complaining, and their mouth speaks great swelling words. What does that tell you? They have a problem with the mouth. Just like James talked about back in James 3. You know, your tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity, full of deadly poison. You see, the Antichrist will open his mouth in blasphemy against God. They will be respecters of persons because it will give them an advantage. And Jude says, Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ into eternal life. You see, notice the tribulation application. I don't have to keep myself in the love of God. The Lord Jesus keeps me in that love. It says in Romans eight thirty eight through 39 For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature, shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. The Lord keeps me in the love of God. Nothing can separate me from it. This isn't so in the tribulation. Remember that pesky mark of the beast and... Worshiping the beast will cause you to fall away. And there is no sin today that could cause me to lose my salvation or make it impossible for me to get salvation. But that's not so in the tribulation. It says in Jude one twenty two, And if some have compassion, making a difference. That's what's like in today. People don't have any compassion. When you see someone who's, who's hurting you, you, when you see someone who's hurting you, you should have compassion. And Jesus would get moved with compassion towards people. And it says, And others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. Save with fear. 
You see, Noah was moved by fear to build the ark. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. You have to warn everyone night and day with tears. Uh, as Paul said, let them know judgment's coming. Paul talked about knowing, therefore, the terror of the Lord. We persuade men. Pull them out of the fire, it says. You see, a lost person is good as in hell. The wrath of God's abiding on him. You should have compassion. Save with fear. Warn the wicked. Pull them out of the fire. Hating even the garments spotted by the flesh. And in the tribulation, their garments will be spotted by the flesh because when they take that mark, they're going to get a noisome and grievous sore on them like a leprous sore. And leprosy gets in your clothes. And even their garments are going to be spotted by the flesh. Jude one twenty five To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. Amen. Jesus Christ is God and Savior. He has dominion and power. He is King of kings and Lord of lords. He's going to sit on a throne reigning as King of kings and Lord of lords and have us under him reigning as kings. But that is the Jude overview.